Hey everybody, this is Dallas Stone here doing another video for you. Uh, today's video is going to be about film and video game modeling. Okay, the differences between the two, so that people understand that there is a difference. Um, a lot of students or a lot of new people in uh, a lot of new new people getting into 3D, they don't understand that there's a difference between the two industries. Okay, so and that's what I'm going to be going through today. Uh, so let's so let's talk about it. Let's talk about film and video games and and the biggest differences. And like I said, there's probably tons more differences that I'm not going to mention here. But these are the basic general differences that you're going to see. Okay. So in film, uh, the 3D models can be higher poly. Now higher poly means, you know, when there, there's no there's not really a limit. I mean, obviously you don't want polys that aren't being used, right? You want to make sure that every single poly is being used to its fullest potential. But you can put as much detail as you as you want really on the model. So you can so usually the end product of a 3D mesh is a lot higher in poly count. Uh, in video games it's a lot lower polys compared to a film model. That being said Main characters in video games usually have a high poly count of like 20,000 uh, polys or triangles. Whereas a film, uh, depending on how complex the characters are, can be from 20,000 triangles to 200,000, right? So uh, it all really depends on the complexity of the characters. But a, a good kind of comparison between the two when it comes to polys is film is usually higher poly, video games is usually lower poly. Okay, In film, you can use a, a method of modeling called NURBS modeling. And and you can you can keep the characters or the character usually NURBS modeling is with organic organic meshes, so things like plants, you know, like that wave around or something. Uh, characters, like I was saying before, are modeled in NURBS and can stay in NURBS. Whereas in video game modeling, m I'd say most of the time, if they build like a car, for example, they would model it in NURBS to get the perfect shape, and then they would have to convert it to polys afterwards. So, in video games right now, I mean, and I'm sure this this might change in the near future or in in in, in the future, you, we cannot use NURBS. We have to use polygons. Everything has to transfer into polygons. Uh, and, and this is for 3D, by the way. This isn't for, you know, 2D sprite art video games. Uh, in film, uh, texturing and UVing is a little bit different. In films like Shrek, for example, uh, Shrek himself probably doesn't have much of a texture to him. He just has a material with a color on it. And, you know, maybe he'll have some texture on his shirt or something but majority of him is n probably not going to be UV or textured whereas in video games majority of all your meshes will be UV properly and will and you'll have to texture your mesh or your, and make sure that the UVs are efficient in the 0 to 1 space and that your texture is at the power of 4 or power of 2 so, video games, it's a little bit more complicated when it comes to creating UVs and textures. It's not as lenient. When you, put it, when you apply a texture to a mesh, it has to be done properly and the most efficient and as efficient as possible. Whereas in film, uh, again, things are, you know, th it's not really much, uh, there's more slack or more uh, freedom when it comes to texturing and UVing. In film, it's also not necessary to create LODs. Uh, LOD stands for level of detail. And what level of detail does is when the camera is at a certain distance, lower, or it really depends, uh, but different, pol the different versions of the meshes will pop in and out or blend in and out. 
So I'll give you an example here. When you're playing Grand Theft Auto, for example, and you are driving uh, on the road, the things that are on the road, like uh, like the cars, right? The car that's like right in front of you will be most likely have a, a high poly model. But if you had driven a hundred yards away from that from that car, and the uh, and the car that's a hundred yards away from you in the distance probably is not the high poly model. It's probably a medium poly model. And the one that's way in the distance that's getting rendered is probably a, a low poly model. Okay, and this is for efficiency, right? It's so that the computer or you know your your console, your graphics card and your CPU is not rendering all these polygons that don't necessarily need the detail. So that's level of detail. That that that's LODs. And in film it's not necessary to have LEDs. I mean, I'm sure that it's important to have some LEDs here and there, but it's not as important as in video games because in video games, people forget uh, the next important point that I'm going to make here. Uh, and this is the reason why things are the way that they are in video games and in film, okay? And that point is, and the biggest difference between film and video games is film is pre-rendered okay and I'll explain that in a second and whereas video games is most of the time is real-time rendering and let me explain to you guys what that means now pre-rendered means that the footage that you're seeing has already been rendered by usually another hardware that is most likely stronger or more powerful than let's say the PlayStation 3 okay so so like films they usually have like a render farm like hundreds of computers that just renders different scenes right and all that's really playing when you're watching in the theater is the finish footage right there's no edits that happen while you're watching the film the film's already done it's already made into a film whereas a video game it's real-time rendering, so what that means is when you're running out to a car in Grand Theft Auto, that car had to be rendered right there, right? The lighting, so if it's, so if it's, so if it's daytime, right, while you're playing Grand Theft Auto and you're approaching this car, the sunlight is hitting the car and is reflecting what's its surroundings, right? So it's reflecting its surroundings. It's, it's casting shadows and when the car is moving it has to recast the shadows recast the reflections and it has to react to what you are doing so it's it's rendering in real time and because it's rendering in real time polygons materials um, all of those things you know textures lighting it has to be more efficient because it's more costly it costs more to render in real time than it is to do pre-render okay which is what film is okay so um, so I hope that kind of makes sense uh, film personally I think that being said film isn't easy to model and, and I hope that people don't take that away from this video is that film is easier to model that's not the case film is just as complex when it comes to modeling than it is in video games. Uh, personally, I like modeling in video games. When I try to model something super high poly now, it's difficult for me because you have to model almost every single detail, right? Whereas I'm used to texturing all of the detail. So it's two different mindsets, two different uh, way of, ways of modeling. So, <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, so I hope you guys learned something from that video, uh, film versus video games a quick note film is pre-rendered video games is real-time rendering and I hope you guys understand that concept okay thank you guys so much